Hi everyone, welcome to this video. I'm getting ready to play a game against my over-the-board friend uh, Anthony, a chess friend I've known for several years. I've played him in friendly games, tournament games, and actually I've already played him online in a few games, but this, as advertised on my channel earlier, this is going to be a dual commentary match, um, or at least a dual commentary game. We're only going to play one game today, not a full match. But um, you'll be able to see in this video uh, my thoughts as I make my moves. You can hop over to his channel where he makes similar videos and then see his thoughts about the same game and the same positions. It's kind of an interesting thing to compare. See um, you know, who, what, uh, what he was thinking about, what did he miss, what did I miss. Um, so I hope you enjoy the two videos. Just waiting for him to set up his video and we'll be starting momentarily. <clears throat> so, uh, we actually tried to set up a game a moment ago, and um, uh, we had to uh, abort um, while we waited to make sure that our settings are both correct. A little bit of a challenge to make sure for a dual commentary match that each player is ready to go and has the recording set up and ready. Okay, so uh, he added an increment. That's actually going to help. We decided to play a longer game, a 15-minute match. Um, okay, so this is interesting. Um, I could play. I norm. I play d5 a lot. Uh, Scandinavian. Uh, I could play Sicilian. Not sure what he does against the open Sicilian. I'm going to try playing e5. I've thought about trying this out against him, but I wasn't sure what he had prepared or how much theory he knew here. So this should be interesting. It's kind of a new weapon. Uh, not, you wouldn't really call it a weapon. It's kind of I played in a pretty solid way, but a new opening I've been trying to develop. Uh, I'm going to try and try it out in my tournament game soon. So we, dis we originally were going to do a small match, so two or three games or as many blitz or bullet games as we could fit in a half hour or an hour. But we've settled on only playing one game. We still have the dual commentary aspect, but this way we can spend more time talking about each of the moves since we have a lot of time on the clock and then we have increment. So he's playing the bishop's opening. A uh, lot of different ways to respond to this. I don't like the idea of responding with the bishop symmetrically. I know some lines here that can get kind of crazy. They can even gambit with f4. Uh, and I want to make sure that I get into the same sort of opening that I would get into if, let's say, he played knight f3. I would play knight c6, and then he plays bishop c4. So, for example, if I play something different, like, um, well, I want to make sure I don't transpose into an opening that's not part of my repertoire, something I'm not familiar with. So I'm going to play knight f6 because I typically meet the Italian game, which would occur if he plays knight f3 and I play knight c6. I typically meet it with knight f6. I typically go into the two knights defense. It's the old adage, uh, knight before bishops, right? which is not being paid attention to here by white, but you could develop the bishops as well. That's not really a... A big problem in most positions. The thing is, and the reason why uh, that's a saying is, um, you typically know where you want to develop your knights. Maybe it's not as so clear. Does the bishop want to go on c4 or b5? Okay. All right. So I was able to take a break from chatting for a moment. Um, a lot of different ways I can handle this position. I think what I'm going to do is play it safe and play h6. It's slow, but so is d3. So I think I can afford that. I might be wrong. You might have something like f4. In this position, I wonder how easy is it for me to get away with d5. Might not be that easy. Play d5, he takes. I take with the knight. He could play queen f3. I could play bishop e6. Knight c3, I play c6. And I think I really can get d5 in, in here. Um, I'm, he, of course, it's his move, right? I you don't get to move two, make two moves in a row. I possibly could have played d5 immediately, and probably that was the better option. 
Um, but I'm not too upset with H6. Right? All this talk about development, and I play a pawn move on the side of the board. Okay, I gotta focus here. So, uh, again, I might as well develop. I'll play. Let's see. I wanna play bishop c5. I wonder, does he have something like b4? And I take and c3. And sort of an Evan Gambit's, an Evan Gambit type line. You know what? I don't believe that that would work. I have h6. I've cut out any attack on g5. I can castle pretty easy now because I've played knight f6. I don't think that any sort of line similar to the Evans Gambit here with b4 is going to work. So, <clears throat> going to simply develop my pieces and see what happens. All right, trying to build a big center. Hmm. Another idea is I could have just played bishop e7. Okay, he's trying to build a big center. I could play d5, uh, d5 right away. I think he might go bishop b5, and that could be a little awkward. I could try and castle, and he plays d4. I take, he takes. Hmm. That also could be a little awkward. I take, he takes. Um, can't take twice there. I could try d6. And if he plays d4, I retreat the bishop. d5 doesn't do anything special. He can then take on e5. I could take back this way. Hmm, this could be interesting. This is already somewhat of a difficult position for me. Bishop e7 was probably a slightly better move. Just stopping any business on the e-file. So the idea would be if I played bishop e7 instead, this is really silly, right? I'm trying to analyze um, a move that I really can't go back and, and change now. Bishop is on c5. I mean, I can with the loss of tempo, but... Um, so this is already a kind of a critical position. Um, could play d5, takes on d5, take with the knight, you could play d4. Also, e5 is loose. So d5 takes. I wonder, do I have knight a5 in a situation like that? Not sure that I do. But I might d5, knight a5, I've gambited a pawn, for what is not clear. No, then I'm just dropping e5, so that, that doesn't work. Uh, let's see, d5, takes with the pawn, take with the knight, he could take this pawn, I could take with the knight. Actually, I'm surprised he didn't take that pawn straight away, the way my bishop is positioned. Let's try this. I'm going to try. Hmm. I'm going to try playing bishop b set um, b6 here. That way, when he plays d4, I can take. He can take back, and I can play d5. Helps me develop. See, the thing is, if I had castles, if I could trade the move h6 for castle and kingside, I would have a good position. His e4 pawn would be weak after playing d4. Um, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to support the pawn. In which case, I would simply castle, and I think I would have a decent position. All right. My opponent has a pretty impressive rating on chess.com, 1949. Um, hoping to shave some rating points off of him. 
Wow. According to chess.com rating system, if I win, I gain 100 rating points. That'd be nice. All right, h3. I'm not really sure what that's designed to accomplish. So I'm going to take this opportunity to castle. Just get my king out of any sort of chaos on the e-file. Predictably defends this pawn, and I see the idea, I think, but between idea behind h3, you can tell I'm a little sleep deprived, um, is to prevent knight g4 hitting f2. And again, this pawn is being attacked right now. So, let's, well, okay, let me rephrase that. This pawn is not being attacked, but it's preventing me from opening lines with d5, because if it takes, and knight takes, then this pawn is attacked more than it's defended. So let's play d6 first. I could always now try and develop my bishop or harass his bishop. Actually, knight a5 right away now, since this pawn is defended, looks to me like a nice option. Uh, it would guarantee that I win the bishop pair. Something I might not necessarily hold on to, but it's a nice asset to have. Okay, so now knight a5 immediately, and I don't think he can preserve the bishop, but I could be wrong. In fact, I am wrong. I play knight a5, he plays bishop b5. I mean, this does give me time to kick his bishop around, but then I have to move my knight back anyway. So, is that really a productive thing to do? Maybe I'll play a6 first. This creates a hole for my my own bishop. Ah, yes. Clever. So he's trying to preserve his light squared bishop. Hmm. Different ways that I could play this. One idea I like now is bishop e7. He's probably going to drop that bishop back anyway. The other problem is, that, do I really want to allow him to push through d4? I could stop it permanently. I could play knight a5 and then c5. But then the question is, what is my own bishop doing? Hmm. The other question right now is, what is my own bishop doing anyway right now? Other than simply getting in the way, or getting in the way of my queenside pawns, it's targeting a pawn I can't attack any further at the moment. Um, don't really see any other access squares. Another idea is knight e7 to g6 to f4, but don't see how that's going to help um, in the short term. Or another idea is knight b8 to d7 to c5. That looks a little bit more promising, but again, the fact that he can play d4, I might as well just try and shut down that counterplay altogether. Oh, it's not really counterplay. I guess it's it's his his main source of, of play. His counterplay is it's normally when you, somebody has an attack. Now d4 it would be ugly if I take it. D4 take take take. Um, I don't think I can hold on to that pawn, but I might be able to. I am controlling c4, so it's kind of a strange position. As you can see in the corner of the times, I'm currently down on the clock, but with the increment, I'm not too worried about the time. I might get into a position where he has to burn some time. His moves, I think, have been a little bit more natural to this point. Uh, I had to come up with some shenanigans and to make sure that I can hold back his center. And c5, very strange move, but I feel like kind of mixing it up, you know. Time to get wacky. All right. Let's see. What could he be planning? What sort of nefarious plans does he have up his sleeve? Is he going to play b4? That's an interesting idea. I'm guessing he's, well, he's not going to want to go for knight c4 right away. Right? If my knight on a5 fell off the board, right, um, 
if this was a physical chessboard and I knocked it over because I'm very reckless when I move my chess pieces. Um, it's like a tornado on the chessboard. No, it's, it really isn't. Okay, so uh, if that was the case, knight c4 would be a great move. But uh, that's not the case. So back to reality. Um, he's going for this maneuver, knight g3 uh, to f5. My bishop is a little off sides for guarding the dark squares here. Hmm. This knight has done its job, so I might as well bring it back. Same thing with this bishop. This bishop's not doing anything. Uh, another idea is to play c4 here. Kind of abandons the whole idea behind c5, but c4, he plays d4, take, he takes with the pawn. Yeah, that's not any good. Don't really have a productive square for this bishop yet. So this is turning into a pretty typical Roy Lopez structure. It's like I, we might even reach something like that from tra uh, through transposition. With one exception, my bishop is on c7 instead of e7, and I think this actually helps him. If it was on e7, I could play rook e8 and bishop f8. And that could be good. The other move I probably should have considered here was king h7. So if he plays knight g3, I could play g6 and keep him out of that square. But I almost feel like letting him have that square um, or just taking there and then giving him the bishop pair. Ah, okay. Didn't think about this one. Okay, so this is an interesting and important moment. He plays d4. There's two options. Well, there's three options. I take with the c-pawn, I take with the e-pawn, or I ignore it. Trading on this square could leave me with a terrible pawn structure. This stupid pawn on d6. Uh, I take, he takes, I take, he takes with the knight. I could then play d5. That might not be bad. But then e5, and where does my knight go? I go to d7, and then he plays e6. That's not so great. And I'm left with an isolated pawn anyway. The other option is if I don't take it, he either closes the center, or he takes one way or the other, but everything in my camp is defended. So I think I'm going to play b5, and just ask him if he wants to take anything. I can bring the knight back somewhere to c4, to c6, to b7. I could play bishop b7 at some point. Or, uh, and that would be nice to put the bishop on the long diagonal. It's another idea I kind of had in the back of my mind of bringing this bishop off of b6 so I can advance my queen side and also put my bishop on b7. Target e4. Right? Sort of a dual purpose move, right? I'm trying to hit the center and the queen side at the same time. Or, you know, within the same span of a few moves. Also wouldn't hurt to finish my development. He also has the problem of not really having completed his own development. Mm -hmm. All right, tense positional struggle. I feel these kind of positions are actually better suited to my opponent than me. Um, I think I uh, I do pretty well getting a swindle in the end game sometimes. And uh, occasionally I can play a good opening, good sequence of opening moves, but middle game struggle, he probably can outplay me more often than not. Although I've, I've had my, I've had my moments. All right. So now plans for white. You could trade, but I don't think it gets him anything. Okay, this is an interesting plan. Uh, try and weaken my queenside pawns. But again, I think I'm just going to ignore it and develop. That's my motto for the day. Close my eyes and just hope for the best. Take a deep breath and develop your pieces.
be funny watching the opening round of a tournament if that's how everybody played. <gasps> and then played their first move. And have a whole room of people doing that at the same time. It would be hilarious. Now it wouldn't be. Okay, so play the bishop here. Shuts down my play here. Threatens to put this knight off sides, I guess. I don't know where else this bishop has a future at the moment. I don't know if I have to move it away right away. Move it away right away. Mm, excuse me. I think I want to reroute my knight. These close positions, the play can get rather rather slow. I want to reroute my knight uh, to c4, b6, and d7. That seems to give my knight somewhat of a future. Not sure what I would do otherwise. You know, here's another idea. Because this bishop, again, is not doing anything at the moment. Uh, you know, if I play bishop c8, it undevelops the rook. And then I have liabilities on the a file, which I don't like, right? So bishop c8, he takes, I take, he plays b4. That's a problem. So, maybe I'll lead with this. The other idea I had was c4 so that I can then play uh, what was that? Oh, knight b7 to c5 but again I'm not sure what that actually accomplishes the other thing to consider is that uh, this bishop doesn't really have a future so maybe c4 maybe c4 is not a bad idea here Okay, I'm going to have to start to pick up the pace. I'm actually down on time by four minutes. But I have an open diagonal now for my bishop, potentially. Um, b4 doesn't threaten to trap the knight. I could take on b3, and if he takes, I take, and then he takes, and I'm okay. And then I just take here. And I would claim he has a weak pawn on c3 to offset my weak pawn on a7. His structure is a little bit better, and my bishop kind of sucks, so he'll probably win, but, eh, what can you do? You just got to try and fight on as much as you can. So, that's actually a pretty promising line, I think, for him. b4, I take. I have to take, otherwise my knight is trapped. b4, I take, he takes, I take, he takes. This is going to be psychologically a hard move to play. Right, he'd be giving up his light square bishop, but he'd get some nice pressure on my queen side. And what is what are my bishops doing? Right, I'd have the bishop pair, but it'd be a really pathetic pair. Right, they look like a giant a set of pawns basically. Um, and it, it's almost it would, for example, this bishop on c7, it's almost worse than a pawn. Right, it's. Well, it can't really be worse than a pawn, but not only is it not very well developed, but it's hemming in my own queen. So instead of all of that mumbo-jumbo and nonsense, he just goes straight for an attack on my king side. Makes sense. Um, looks like it actually might be difficult to meet. But one problem for him is if he tries to play g5 and I take... Well, g5, maybe I could just retreat. But my idea here now is... What is my idea? Do I have any ideas left in this position? Do I have any time left? If I play bishop c8, again, there's the problem of takes, takes, and... Oh, now b5 is no longer a problem because I could take en passant. So let's go for that. I'm going to try bishop c8. Uh, and if he plays g5, which I really should have calculated, but I'm running out of time, um, I could take on h3, but the problem is I can't leave my knight hanging, right? So if he plays here, I have to take, and if he takes with the knight, hmm. This could quickly become very ugly. Ah, but he doesn't go for that. So now, 
I think I could defend against g5. Now if you tr if I play this and he tries to play g5, I can take, he takes with the knight, I take with the knight, he takes with the bishop, I take with the queen. So, this temporarily holds up g5. He could try and play h4, but then that would drop the g4 pawn. So, my bishop came back in the nick of time uh, to help out in the defense. Now, in these types of positions, I think you got to be careful that of switching between two flanks. So, I was able to do that with the bishop to defend the king side a little bit. But, now he can play a few moves on the king side, play a few moves on the queen side, kind of sway back and forth. You have to sway in front of the camera in order to make it, make it work. Um, right, I'm not sure what that accomplishes. So, can I now proceed with my own play and try and improve this knight? Well, one thing that it accomplishes is that well, actually, now I can simply get pressure on f2, right? If I want it. Let's bring the knight back first. No, because then the a pawn is. <laughs> don't do it! The a pawn would be uh, a, a target. Okay, I'll play rook b8 first. <laughs> okay. I think I might have to be prepared to chop on f5. If he plays knight f5, I might have to take it right away. I don't know how long I can tolerate a knight on that position. Or on that square, I should say. I'd like to put my knight on c5 a little bit better on that square. At least it hits e4. Okay. Could have taken with the rook, too, but... Yeah, that would have been interesting. Taking with the rook. But then he just doesn't develop this piece, and he's fine. Now, does he have a sacrifice on h6 at any point? That would look killer. You just rip my king to pieces. If he takes, takes. And then plays. Uh, you see, I don't know how he gets his heavy pieces in. He takes, I take. He plays queen d2. Oh, this is actually a big problem. Queen d2. How do I defend that? I'd have to play. Queen f6. If I played rook g, I'm um, sorry, king g7, knight h5, check, and then I'm in trouble. So the only way to guard that would then to be play to play king g6, and then he can check me further. So, uh, okay, he's preparing action on the g file. Should we take this moment to target f2? don't think that's the right time for that. I don't want to leave this knight hanging when he plays, for example, I play here, plays bishop e3. So let's bring this back first. And again, sort of call his bluff. Well, it's a pretty serious bluff, though. Alright. Say, so are you going to really try and rip apart my king when you have all these liabilities here? Maybe knight h5 first is the way to, way to go. Or some other move with the knight. Knight h5 to start with. Hmm. Problem is my pieces are pretty passive in this position. I'm also down on time by about a minute. Or two minutes. Did I count that right? Okay. Now do I have to take here right away? Of course when I have the no time left I have uh, to calculate the most complex position. Do I take here right away? I think I do. Don't want to allow any funny business that night and any sacrifices on my dark squares. My light squares, eh. <laughs> That's a really insightful way to analyze the chess position. Light squares? Eh. Okay. I'm sidestepping so I could play rook g8 and cover some of these dark squares. I also plan on playing bishop b6 at some point. He can cut that out with rook a6. No, no rook a6 doesn't cut that out. Play bishop b6. But does that do anything? He just plays rook g2. I would love to see him, or queen e2. I'd love to see him play bishop e3 in response to that. But I 
don't think he needs to. Instead, I need to switch. If I could switch the position to my queen and my bishop, that might be good. Or if I could play bishop f6 here. Oh, if I could play bishop f6 here, forget about it. That would be great. But right now, my bishop is doing nothing. So, I may have just gotten thoroughly outplayed. Ah, okay. This is actually what I was kind of hoping for. Now, if he tries to retreat the bishop, I get f2. Even if he tries to sack the... No, if he sacks the bishop, I have to take it. He can't allow rook takes or bishop takes g7. So, I think bishop e3 by him was a little bit of a mistake. All right. Better for him to defend this pawn another way. This bishop is more valuable, I think, as an attacking piece to just rip my piece, my king side apart. Right? Uh, I'm not really sure how he would do it. I don't know if f6 first is good. Maybe I just play g6 then. Um, okay. Again, I'm happy to trade my useless piece of garbage that was on c7 uh, for his his queen here. F6 immediately wouldn't have done anything. Now my knight stands proud on c5. I'm hitting e4. I can attack e4 further if I want. Uh, my queen doesn't have a future at the moment. I have b4 as well. Does that do anything? And I always have this and, and queen here. b4 takes. I take with a rook. Let's try it. Starting to run out of time. I don't want to allow him to play b4 himself. Okay. Play here. Queen takes doesn't do anything, I don't think. Queen f6. I should have played that instead of b4. Now, rook takes g7, rook takes g7, rook takes, queen takes. No, that doesn't do anything for him. All right, I think I'm holding this. Reaching a critical position with time pressure here. If he takes on b4, I take back with the rook. I don't think taking on c3 necessarily helps me, but maybe it helps me in some other position. I don't know if playing b3 helps that much either. Okay, I think I just take here. And then I say, what's the point of that? Now I'm covering h6 and g7. And I have everything covered. Your bishop's not doing anything. This would be great if I get a knight versus bishop endgame. Question remains about these two knights. What are they doing? B2 is getting hurt. Okay, so I'm dropping c4, am I? Yeah, I guess I am. But if you take c4, I take b2. And we're starting to equalize on the clock. Okay, so he doesn't take there. Uh, let's try this. Now we can take on c4 that way. All right. Okay. I gotta keep protecting d6. Now the. Hmm. Okay, tough position, tough position. Take, take, take. Yeah, let's try taking this way. All right, this should win the exchange. I think I've dissipated a lot of his pressure. This was a crazy game. Let's pile on this guy. Everything else is defended for the moment. Right? Oh, man. Do I let this end in a draw? I say no. No draw. Not yet. Mm, okay. Let's play for f5. Okay, let's play for this. Where are you going with that piece? Let's pin this piece. Oh no, that was bad. I should have taken the draw, shouldn't I? Hmm. All right. <laughs> wow. So close. Should have just taken a draw. Yep. <laughs> well, I'll just play a few more moves out of uh, out of momentum here. Not really sure where else to go or what else to do. Uh, almost everything is defended, so that's that's kind of a good thing. But uh... 
Offering him a draw when I'm down a rook. Classic. Hmm. <laughs> Good move on his part. But again, I think I just sit. Oh no, I can't just sit. Can I do? No, I can't do this. Shit. <laughs> oh, well, he kind of let me get away with it. Let's try that. I have queen d5. Ah, oh, very nice. Yes. Very nice. Ah, uh, shoot. I should have taken the draw. Story of my life. <laughs> uh, he notches a nice win over me. I felt like he outplayed me for a long time, and then I equalized and then threw it all away because I thought I could win it. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go back here just a second. Yeah, I think this is actually... Well, this is good for me. Uh... Yeah, it's just in time pressure, I played this stupid move. Yeah, rook c8, that was a gross move. Ugliest move of the year. No, that's not true. Uh, I mean, what else do I do here? He's not threatening anything. Um, yeah, this was time trouble, though, clearly. Um, I could play... Uh, a lot of things. I mean, I could even just sack back the exchange if I really want to and play f5 and say I'm going to get my pawns rolling. Yeah, that would have been so easy. I, oh man. Although he does have the pass b pawn in this case. All right, well. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this match. And uh, again, pop over to Anthony's channel. I'll put the link somewhere, uh, either as an annotation, maybe popping up around me some, somewhere right now, or uh, in the um, description of the video. Um, if you liked what you saw, please share the video, uh, like it, and subscribe, and comment, and share it with all your friends, and shout it from rooftop, and make copies of it, and sell DVDs of it on the black market, all right, uh, or the white market, depending on which side of the board you like to play on. All right, have a good day. Bye.